Hello, Big Gambo here. I'm just gonna record myself uh, photographing some items. I've got like 20 of them done for the day already. Um, but I was just thinking, oh, I should probably make a YouTube video, huh? People like YouTube videos. Um, yeah, so here I am. This one does not have a material tag, it's cut out. So I always take a picture of the material tag cut out, if it is cut out, so that when they message me asking about the specific fabric contents, I can just say, I don't know for sure, because the material tag is cut out. If you don't take a picture of it, then you go back looking for it. Um, you gotta pull the item out, blah, blah, blah. Or you can just ignore the person, which a lot of times just creates bigger problems. You can lie to them. I'm pretty sure the fabric content of this is a polyester spandex blend, like most polo golf shirts. So I'm just going to put that polyester blend in the title, polyester performance stretch, and then polyester blend in the item specifics. These are all, what, oh shit. Everything I'm saying right now is just what is happening in my brain as I'm photographing the items usually. So, I'm just thinking out loud in order to fill up this audio here. So you have something to listen to. Here's another one. This one's a Nike one. Last one was an Under Armour one. These weren't the best buys. I paid $7 on each of them. Um, so selling them for $15, I will be profiting about $7. Um, it would be s about $6, um, but I, I'm gonna make at least a dollar on the shipping. On the Nike ones, I, I do the model too. It's the tag on the bottom. When you when your purchase price is seven dollars with my um, little calculating app, it's really easy to figure out what you would make on each item. So if it was a, if I sold it for, sorry, actually I'll only be making five dollars if I sell it for fifteen dollars. If I sell it for seven dollars, I will be profiting. Or sorry, if I sell it for seventeen dollars, I will be profiting about seven dollars. If I sell it for $16, I will be profiting about $16. If I sell it for $15, plus shipping on all these, I will be profiting about $5. And on downward. But that's all calculated with me making a dollar on the shipping and with my 5% promoted listing. Um, eBay fees and all that. There's a really good website you can use, which I use quite frequently. I'll pull it up and show it to you. Your buyer has paid. Oh, I sold something. Let's see. I sold a pair of REI Co-op Cornati roll-up hiking pants, uh, women's size 12 for $28 and uh, $7.50 shipping on that. Pretty good. So the website is called ebayfeescalculator.com. So like for that specific Nike golf shirt that I paid $7 for, which is a lot, you would put $7 as the item cost. Let's say you flip it for $18. With um, the shipping cost would be about five dollars, maybe four fifty if you're lucky. Um, I'm charging five ninety nine on the shipping. Blah blah blah. Number of orders. eBay store basic. Top rated. Managed payments. Promoted ad rate five percent. So I'll be profiting. F Wait, something's wrong here. Okay, I'll be profiting seven dollars and ninety cents if I sell it for eighteen. I'll probably sell it for fifteen. In which case I will be profiting five dollars and thirty-seven cents 
if I if it doesn't sell via promoted, which there's about a 50% chance it will, about half my sales go promoted, I will be profiting 642, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, my average uh, profit per item is eleven dollars at the moment. So you have a bunch of those ones where you profit like five to seven bucks. You have a bunch where you profit, well not a bunch, you have a couple where you profit like 50 bucks if it's like a $75 sale or something. Maybe you have a few where you profit like 75 bucks. The way I like to think about it is like if I do one, sell one item that sells for $100, um, it basically brought the uh, average sale price of a hundred items up by one dollar so you got to find those items in order to get your average sale price up you can't just sell all uh, $15 items I mean you can but it's gonna make your life a lot more difficult if you can't find any really good items and it would be ideal if you could only buy $100 items, but there's not that many out there. So you kind of have to supplement the business with the uh, 5 to $10 profit items. And you just got to do more of them. And like, I don't want to sell Nike shirts that are only $5 profit. But when there's a whole bunch of them right in front of you and you know you can flip them really fast, sometimes it's worth it to just grab them instead of going to two or three more thrift stores, which takes more time, which means it takes more money. You know? So I'm kind of forgetting what pictures I took and what pictures I didn't take because I'm talking at the same time here. So... Hopefully I didn't forget a picture on this. Ooh, there's a little stain on the sleeve there. Faint stain on sleeve. Great condition. Faint stain on sleeve. Shown in photos. So that's what I'd be saying in my head. So when I list this later, I've already come up with exactly what I'm going to type. And it makes the listing process uh, a lot more quick because it's already gone through your brain and processed. Instead of when you're listing, if you're just thinking about it at that moment. And thinking about it, you remember that there's a flaw when you're listing it. So you don't accidentally say that there's no flaws. And it turns out there is a flaw. This is a specialized polo shirt. I got two of these and on one of them I already listed it the material was 10% um, merino wool and then 90% polyester I think but this one doesn't have the material tag on it um, which is annoying whenever I have two items that are super similar like this one and the other one I try to split them up by a couple days by just throwing one of them at the bottom of my pile because if you list two that are identical like right next to each other eBay hides one of them And I'm not going to sell similar on that one either. Because if you have two identical items with the identical title, identical, almost identical photos, then I just feel like eBay hides one of them. And I've, I've tested this out by listing um, items like that. And you'll see one of them will have like 25 views or whatever, and the other ones will be zero. And they're the same thing. So you'd think they would all have similar views, but they won't. Sometimes there'll be a little fuzz under the armpits. Uh, yeah, I already got that photo. Did I try to get the material tag photo? There is no material tag. It's cut out, but I'll take a photo of that. So I remember. Let's see here. Bam, 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 bam. Throw it in the bag. Still recording.
Let's see if my audio is still recording. Please be recording. Good it is. I guess whenever the audio for this video cuts out, oops, sorry, I will uh, end the video. Because this iPhone sucks. It'll die in like five minutes. This item is uh, really wrinkly, but I'm not going to take the time to steam it. Partially because this camera that I'm filming with is mounted on top of my steamer and this isn't really worth steaming. I'll just try to flatten it out. Sometimes if you dim your light, you can make some of the wrinkles disappear a little bit. Also, if it's a bright color like yellow or red, um, dimming your lights can help it be a more accurate color when you photograph it. Also, changing your exposure or whatever setting on your camera. Um, I do like negative three and it'll just look more accurate. Instead of like sometimes it'll be really bright and you can't see the little details of the fabric if it's one of those bright primary colors. On the single stitch, I always take a picture of the stitching on the hem and the sleeve, the tag. I, already, I forgot to get the bottom of the tag there. Oh, there was some cracking on the graphic. I'll get that too. Um, usually I have a specific order that I take the photos in, but I'm kind of forgetting some of them because I'm talking at the same time. Um, yeah. And I got this little stool next to me that every time I have to adjust like the ruler, I throw the camera down on the stool. Also, if you're taking photos with an iPhone, like so if the orientation is like this and then you need to use it like this, if you don't wait for it to turn, um, you're going to be having to rotate all your photos later. So you want to try to wait till it turns um, so that you don't have to do a hundred rotations. Usually I have a couple, but usually takes about a half second and it actually turns. I don't know if you can see on the camera. But if like you try to, like if you point it straight down, um, yeah, so it'll, and it also helps to have your board at a certain angle so that it rotates quicker. Because if you do it like this, if you're pointing straight down on a flat lay and you turn it like this, none of your photos will get rotated. So having it pointed like this and like, do you understand what I'm saying? Whatever. You get it. Put it in the bag. Usually I put it in the bag over here, but I'll do it here so you can see. This is way more difficult. Uh, I'm going to do it here. And I always put the little bag thing in my mouth. And sometimes I'll keep it in my mouth. So I'll have like 15 of these in my mouth at one time because I'm not talking usually. I think we sold another item. Hold on, I'll show you in a second. And I just don't, I don't take a ton of time staging it. I just try to get it good enough. So it just looks like a guy is just taking the pictures on his carpet. Just selling his own stuff or whatever. All right, let's see what I sold here. And that was just a Nike athletic t shirt. Okay, what did I sell here? Okay, not good. <laughs> really bad. 
Uh, a pair of Seven for All Mankind mid-rise flare leg jeans, size 28, sold for $2.26 plus $8.30 shipping. So I probably paid about $1.57 for those at the bins. Um, they sold for what? $2.26? $2.26. I'm using my little calculator here. I'm gonna, I charged eight thirty shipping, but those are gonna fit into a, a flat rate envelope, the paper one. So it's gonna cost, I think a dollar, or sorry, seven fifty three, And then the item cost, I'll just put it at 175. So my profit is negative 16 cents. Great. And you can see that's on a wooden background, so that's been in my store forever. Over six months, I think. Anyway, so yeah, don't buy those. What is this? This is a outdoor research uh, athletic shirt. I think it's a wool blend. All right. I don't like this type of material for photographing because it doesn't really lay flat. But oh, we gotta turn the brightness back up. Boom, boom, boom. Long sleeves. I like to do the sleeves like that because there's always stains on the sleeves, but there's not on this, fortunately. And then I do one with the thing zipped if it's like a quarter zip. If it's a full zip, I'll unzip the entire thing or like right down to the end so that I can zip it back up with like one hand. Get the material tag. I just burped, I don't know if you heard it. Lay that out. There's like one tiny mark on the shoulder there. Sometimes I'll use like a little Sharpie to point out the flaws, but it's just quicker to just use your finger and it doesn't really matter. Most of the stuff you think matters really doesn't matter. I think pilling kind of matters though. I get a lot of messages. Is there pilling on this? I look at my description and if it says there's pilling, I say, yes, there's pilling. So that's one of those things you always gotta look out for, especially on the women's clothes. Men, I've never got that question. Basic. You've already seen a bunch of this stuff in my last video. Or maybe two videos ago? No, my last video. I'm still listing it. I've been doing 30 a day and I'm still not through all of it yet. I um, mean, this weekend I'm only allowed to go to the bins because I spent a lot on inventory last week and I gotta try to bring the average down. So after this, I'll probably go to the bins. On sweatshirts, I like to flip this open and show the interior fleece, um, which I stole from a guy who sells like a lot of really expensive vintage sweatshirts. He always shows the interior. This is not vintage, but I just, because sometimes you get a sweatshirt that's like 100% cotton and there's no fleece on the inside. Um, so yeah, and it also helps me know when I'm listing it if the material is fleece or if it's, I guess it would be considered knit or maybe woven, I don't know. But usually on hoodies, I'll do them, if they're fleece lined like most hoodies are, um, I'll just put fleece as the material. 
and then the the or sorry as the fabric type and then the material is going to be 99% uh, of the time it's a cotton polyester blend actually not a good sell through rate on um, wait is this Stanford or is this Oh, this is Stanford. I haven't looked up the Stanford Nike hoodie sell through rate, but the one on, um, what is the Southern California school? Whatever, the Trojans one, uh, not a good sell through rate on Nike Trojans hoodies, which I thought there was, but there's not. And I bought one the other day. So that means I have to sell it for cheap. Not really a great sell through rate on any hoodies at the moment, so not a big deal and I don't price my stuff like if I'm listing a hoodie I don't price what I think it's gonna sell out in the winter when it's hoodie time I just sell it what it's selling for right now because I would rather just sell it right now than for a little more in the winter we got a little smart wool sweater here looking for holes I don't see any holes which is excellent see maybe you just saw it just there I was holding my camera like this for a minute to make sure that it's rotated properly size small not great but it's smart wool so I'll probably price this if it doesn't have any holes at like $35 shit Smart wool with a bunch of holes. Um, depending on what the item is, I usually price it, if it has a bunch of holes, at like low 20s. If it has like one hole, depending on what the item is, I will do a like higher 20, no holes, because it's so rare you can kind of price a little higher. If this was like a men's large, um, it's going to be like higher 30s, maybe into the 40s. But this is not, and some people might even price them higher than that. But I try to price everything to sell within uh, 90 days, um, ideally within 30 days. So I accept offers, a lot of offers that you probably wouldn't accept. Yeah, and I'm just talking. This is just usually. Um, the thoughts that are happening in my brain while I'm doing this. So it's pretty easy to just talk, talk, talk. Put my little sticker on there. And this is the photo you never want to forget. Boom. Super important. I might have forgotten one here while you were watching, but um, yeah, I'll figure that out later. This is a little more difficult doing this talking. and being watched. And sometimes I can get way too into the fabric shaving. It's been like 10 minutes on one thing, but you wanna to try to avoid it. It's probably better to just take a picture of a little bit of pilling and say, light pilling. So I kind of get down low like that to get a picture of the fuzziness. And on the collar, we do the tag. There's no size tag on that. I do the sleeves. I do the interior fleece. Flip it. I do a little of the pilling on the pits here. And on the waistband, that's good enough. It's not too bad on this. Sometimes you'll pick up a sweatshirt and it'll look like it has no pilling in the thrift store. And then once you get it under these lights, the shadow of each little fabric ball gets caught. And uh, it's really apparent, which is the case here. It's not too bad on this one though. I'm not even gonna call it pilling. I'm gonna say light fuzz throughout. 
shown in photos. Uh, and then you have to think ahead here how it's going to best fit in your bag. Which I think I said these were 9 by 11, but they're actually 9 by 12. And they're called Spartan bags, and they're on Amazon. And then if it's a bigger item like this, um, where it's kind of pulling at the adhesive. Uh, oh shit, I, uh, I throw a piece of tape on it. Just because after about a month or whatever sitting in your inventory, the adhesive goes bad and starts flipping up um, if the item is like pulling at the adhesive. So the tape holds it down. And then if the adhesive, if the thing comes up, then it sticks to the bag next to it. And then when you try to pull one item, it accidentally pulls two out. And then that's just a, just an issue that you might have with this system if you're doing something similar. Oh, got an REI Co-op Tech T. It's got a little bit of wrinkles, but I'm not going to worry about it. Sometimes pet hair, like, weaves itself through the fabric, which is super annoying, especially on, like, polyester things. And then you try to fabric shave it, but the, the pet hair is, like, woven through. And I just got an offer on something. Let's see what it is. Respond to offer. It's a pair of Under Armour golf shorts. I have them listed at $24.88. Um, and they sent $16 offer. I'm probably going to counter with $19. I really had in my head I don't want to accept lower than $18 on this. So because I've been selling them for between 18 and like $21 the last couple of days. So there's really no point in taking a uh, low offer if the item does have a really good sell-through rate, which on the um, Under Armour Golf Shorts, which I showed you in the last video, it's like a 200% sell-through rate. It might not be 200, but it's definitely over 100 in size 36. So um, a lot of times I won't counter offer on things, but if I paid up specifically because an item has a high sell through rate. I'm not going to uh, do $10 off for no reason if it's just going to sell tomorrow for more money. That's why you got to look up the sell through rate of all the items that you sell so you can know when to accept the offer and when not to. But usually if you're not going to accept it, you should at least counter because eBay like keeps track of how you respond to the offers. And if you just decline, they're going to be like, oh, this guy just declines all the offers he gets. Whereas if you're countering, at least it shows that you're like trying to make a deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think I should be at about 30 items. I'm going to count them here. Let's see. I accidentally put these two close together so taller items are catching on it. The ones at the bottom are spaced perfectly, but these ones are a little too small, so I have to push down, which is another reason why uh, listing bigger items sucks. Okay, let's see, where did I start here? Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 
Cool, so I photographed 31 items, and I'll list all 31 of those. I usually like, I do 30 a day, but I usually like to have an extra one on there, because sometimes uh, when you're listing, um, like one of them you might have forgot a measurement or a photo, and then you can still get your 30 and then just fix that one the next day. Um, so thank you for watching. My name is Big Gumbo.